How is it going YouTube? LSM here, and today we're going to be talking about the nobodies. And a little warning before we get into everything about the nobodies. There is some huge exceptions that contradict a lot of what we know about them. So I'm going to try to do the best that I can so that you don't get confused to the point where you think this is all rocket science. Okay, I'm going to do the best I can and let me know if I do a good job. And if you enjoy the video, please give a like, share it around, and subscribe to the channel for more. Because I will be making more of these in the future. Now let's get right into the video. There are three components that make up a person in the Kingdom Hearts universe. The body, the soul, and the heart. When a person's heart is swallowed by the darkness, it produces a heartless. Nobodies are what is left behind the heart. The body gives nobodies a form, and the soul gives the nobodies life. While heartless are usually black in coloration, nobodies are mostly white and gray in coloration. All nobodies vanish from the realm of light upon their creation at the loss of a heart and the creation of a heartless. They are born in the realm in between, such as Twilight Town or Castle Oblivion. Because of this, and their lack of hearts, they are both shunned by both light and darkness, thus do not truly exist or ever were supposed to at all. Because of their missing hearts, nobodies are said to be incapable of feeling emotions and lack memories of their former selves by every credible source, which is mostly true, but it changes and there are exceptions, but hang on, hold strap your strap-ons on and hold on to your ass cheeks. I will get to all of it in a matter of minutes, okay? Since nobodies are the second group of enemies you encounter in the story, particular Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix and Chain of Memories, after the Heartless, it's easy to say that they're stronger if not more dangerous than the Heartless. Despite their lack of emotions, nobodies are able to think for themselves and act with definite planning, unlike the Heartless. Cause, because compared to nobodies, they're a lot like wild stupid fucking animals. Nobodies also seem to be able to experience physical sensations such as pain and negative reactions to taking damage. So now that we have an overall decent summary of what nobodies actually are, let's talk about the different types of nobodies and try to stay with me because this is where it's gonna get bumpy, okay? So, when we first hear of a mention about nobodies, it was in Kingdom Hearts 2 at the Mysterious Tower when Yin Sid talks to Sora, Donald, and Goofy about the types of enemies they would encounter throughout the game. Now before this, we did encounter one nobody in Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix, and also in Chain of Memories, but that was before we even knew they were nobodies. In Kingdom Hearts 2, that's when we were revealed that they are nobodies. While talking to Sordon and Goofy about the enemies that we will encounter, he shows the image of the most common nobody using magic holograms called a dusk. And then he reveals something else, more human-like, and they're from an organization known as Organization 13. Let's take a look at what Yin Sid has to say about all this bullshit, alright? Let's go take a look. But wait a sec, how come the Heartless are still running around? Your past endeavors did prevent an immense effusion of Heartless from the Great Darkness. Make no mistake about that. However, the Heartless are darkness made real, and darkness yet lingers in every heart. The Heartless are fewer, but while darkness exists in a single heart, it will be difficult to eliminate them. Gorge, that must mean if everybody's heart was full of light, them Heartless would go away. Now, it is time to speak of the enemies that you will encounter. If one such as you, Donald, yields to the darkness in their heart, they too will become a heartless. 
but you know this. The Heartless are always lurking and ever seeking to capture new hearts. Never let your guard down. Now then. At times, if someone with a strong heart and will, be they evil or good, becomes a Heartless, the empty shell they leave behind begins to act with a will of its own. An empty vessel whose heart has been stolen away. A spirit that goes on even as its body fades from existence. For you see, no bodies do not truly exist at all. No bodies may seem to have feelings, but this is a ruse. They only pretend to have hearts. You must not be deceived. No bodies. They don't exist. Now then, the being you see before you is known as a dusk. They are the most common form of nobody. But there are others, some larger, some with frightening and unique powers. Be vigilant. On your journey, you will meet an alarming number of dusks. They will all attempt to do you harm. Still, they are nothing but empty shells destined to return to darkness. But... The beings you see before you now are different. These powerful nobodies have formed a group called Organization 13. It commands the lesser nobodies. Organization 13. While heartless act on instinct, nobodies function in a higher manner. They can think and plan and it seems they are working towards a goal. What that goal is, we do not know. These higher nobodies that formed a group called Organization 13 are the main antagonists of Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts 2. And this is where the ex exceptions start to kick in, because the these nobodies are the most powerful forms of nobodies we know of so far. And as you hear what Yin Sid said, they can command the lesser nobodies to do their bidding. The human form they take is mainly based off their former selves as well. And a great reference to explain this is the vampire hierarchy in the Witcher series, where the more beast-like vampires are the weaker lesser vampires, and the humanoid vampires are the most powerful and are known as higher vampires. Like the higher vampires, these nobodies resemble more human and are hard to distinguish from one another. They also retain the memories of their former lives, and through these memories are able to remember what it was like to have emotions, thus being able to respond correctly to specific situations and pretend to have emotions. At least, that's what we were told, and so that's what we thought. I know, I know. It's getting crazy, but stay with me. You know, for the longest time, ever since Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts 2, it was debatable whether or not they were incapable of feeling anything at all. In Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, the nobody's emotions are explored upon heavily in the cutscenes. The reason this idea was so debatable, revealing that they can form their own hearts in Dream Drop distance, wow. It's because of the two exceptions to even the Organization 13 nobodies. We're talking about the unusual nobodies. Roxas, whose name is literally Sora with an X, like all Organization 13 members, making him the 13th member of the organization, picked by Xemnas himself. And then there's Naminé, the very first ever nobody of a Princess of Heart. They were born differently than any other form of nobody. 
when in the events of the first Kingdom Hearts game, Kairi's heart retreated into Sora after the events of Destiny Islands, because Aqua casted a spell on her in Birth by Sleep when Kairi was only a little girl. Whenever she's in trouble, the light within her will lead her to another, someone to keep her safe, hence Sora. One day when you're in trouble, the light within you will lead you to the light of another. Someone to keep you safe. Thanks! Towards the end of the game, in order for Sora to free Kairi's captive heart within him, he uses the keyblade that unlocks people's hearts into himself, turning into a shadow heartless in the process. occurred, his Nobody Roxas was also being created along with Namine because of Kairi's heart within Sora. When a person becomes a heartless, the body, soul, and the memories transfer to the Nobody. However, in this case, Sora was able to revert back into his former self before that could take place, hindering Roxas and Namine's memories. They were born without any memories of their past lives due to the unusual nature of their births, and thus had no basis for any pretend emotions. Normally, nobodies can't coexist at all with their original selves, but however, Roxas and Namine can. They can coexist with their original selves. Somehow Roxas is able to coexist with Sora, the Keyblade Wilder from the Realm of Light. And Namine is able to coexist with Kairi, who is a princess of heart, which was thought that it was impossible for a princess of heart to have a nobody, but hey, that's what makes her very, very special. And they also held half of their essence within them, making them more human than any other nobodies. Now the nobody of Lee named Axel, on the other hand, he denied the idea of feeling emotions, but he seemed to show a bond towards Roxas and claimed that Roxas made him feel like he had a heart and acted on his feelings of friendship a number of times. Axel's reasons for a display of emotions do not quite follow the suit of trend that Roxas and Namine have. When a nobody is destroyed, it fades back into darkness. If their hearts are released first, they become the original person they were born from, as shown as Axel dies and comes back as Lee, or as when Ansem was defeated first and then Zemnis, recreating Mr. Old Baldy himself, Zaya Morty. If you're a newcomer, most likely you are, just considering you're watching this video anyway. This is deep and dive in Kingdom Hearts lore, but you're probably wondering why they don't look like their originals. Just like how Roxas doesn't look like Sora, and Namine doesn't look like Kairi, it's because of different reasons for each scenario. Like for Xemnas and Xehanort, around the time Xemnas was created, Xehanort transferred his heart and possessed a Keyblade Wilder named Terra, making him Terra Xehanort, or aka Terranort. As is why Xehanort's nobody with his white hair when yellow eyes, but May takes the form of Terra. Now with Roxas and Sora, not only did Sora have Kairi within him, he 
he had another Keyblade wielder within him that even gave him the ability to wield a Keyblade in the first place. And that Keyblade wielder is Ventus. Even though Roxas is Sora's nobody only, Roxas did take on the form of Ventus. As for Namine, it's not entirely clear, but it's implied to be due to her connection to Sora and being able to access his memories like she does in Chain of Memories, even though she is strictly Kairi's nobody. And what else am I forgetting? Oh yeah, I have one more special type of nobody that I need to explain some, and that is the replicas. Replicas are an artificial copy of another being created by Vexen in Chain of Memories. The first successful replica of Vexen's first batch was the Riku replica, and the only replica from Vexen's second batch was revealed to be Xion in 358 over 2 days. She is also the 14th member in Organization 13, but not officially really. But anyway, replicas are used to act as vessels for hearts, which was perfected by Vexen in Kingdom Hearts 3, and this is how Namine, Xion, and Roxas are able to exist again to become their own person. And anyway guys, that's going to wrap up the video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. It took me a lot of time to make this. And I think I got about... I think I've gone through almost everything you need to know about Nobodies. So please show some love. It took me so long to make this. Like, comment, share this fucker everywhere. And subscribe to the channel to see more of this type of content. Kingdom Hearts and whatnot. Alright. And I will see you guys on the next video of Kingdom Hearts lore. LSM is out, guys. Peace.